My name is Amelia and I am a librarian at the Randallstown branch. Today we will learn to make a simple journal, specifically a dream journal, using easy to find supplies and a basic saddle stitch for binding. Dream journals can help us uncover buried emotions, ways in which to solve a situation in our lives that we cannot make sense of during waking hours, or help us to gain the ability to lucid dream, which is when we are in control of our dreams. Dream journals can also be something that you don't have to write in. You could draw or paint or collage, however you want to express your dreams. So for materials, we are going to need at least one piece of a thicker type of paper. So I'm gonna use watercolor today. And then a pad of a thinner type of paper. This is thin drawing paper that I'm gonna use. Then we will need some thread. Now the one I'm using is actually beeswax thread, but you absolutely don't need that. Embroidery thread is fine. Then a book binding needle or a sharp embroidery needle. An awl, which is a book binding tool. And, but you can also substitute a, like a hammer and your needle and, and get the same effect that we're gonna, gonna need for that. And then lastly, some scissors and um, binder clips. First thing I'm going to do is take my thicker paper, and this is gonna act as the cover, and then just fold it in half vertically. press down hard here so we can get a nice line. Then I'm gonna unfold the paper and we're gonna have this worn line right here in the center and we're gonna come back to that later. Then I'm going to take my thin drawing paper. I'm using 10 sheets today, which is going to make a 20 page journal, but you can adjust that to fit you know, however many pages you want your journal to be. So I am just going to set down my journal pages on top of my cover and, you know, just try to center it as best I can. Then I'm gonna take my binder clips, probably gonna use the smaller ones for this part. And these are going to hold all of our pages in place when we punch holes in the center with our awl. So that should be good. So I'm just gonna flip this back over, kind of push everything to flatten it out. Make five holes along the spine. I start in roughly the center. And I'm just going to punch my awl through. And again, this is the step that if you have uh, a hammer and, and needle and don't have access to an awl, you can just, you know, lightly push through the needle with the needle and then lightly hammer. So I got the first one. Second. I'm going to make my top. I'm just gonna lift it up here to make sure my all is going through and all looks good. Okay, all good, five, they all went through. So I'm gonna demonstrate a really simple stitch today called a saddle stitch. So I'm just gonna take my needle, which is a pretty, it's a book binding needle, but again, like a thin, thin sharp embroidery needle would be fine too. And my thread, which again is beeswax thread, which just means beeswax has been put on the outside of the thread, but also you, you don't, absolutely don't need that. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball how much thread I'm gonna need. So what, this is probably a little bit longer than arm's length. 
take my scissors, cut my piece. Thread through the needle. Okay, now we're ready to get started with our saddle stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my pages over and I am going to insert the needle in the center hole here. Perfect. And then just bring it through. Okay. So I'm going to leave enough of a tail that I'll be able to tie up the threads in the end. So don't pull it all the way through. Then I'm going to sew back down through the second hole from the top. And then through the top here. And then I'm going to return back down because we have to sew the bottom now. So I'm coming back through the center, I'm head to the bottom. As you can see, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the beeswax thread through. We just need a little patience. All right, now we're headed down to the bottom. All right, now we're gonna come back to the center. going to tie off my thread. Just want to try to make it as tight as you can. And this is why, you know, I left a little bit of that tail at the beginning to be able to tie off. And I'm just going to double knot it because that makes me feel better. And that is your saddle stitch. And then all we're going to do is take off our binder clips. And fold our journal to get our front and back covers. Going to require some muscle this part. But. And voila, you have your front cover and your back cover. And you will want to, as you can see, it's going to want to flop back open. So to flatten out your journal, you can either use binder clips again, you can use these bigger clips, which I'm going to do right now. Or also when I'm at home, honestly, I just like to put it under like a heavy stack of books. All right. So then the next step, of course, would be to decorate however you want to. And I have some examples here that I've already made. This is one where I actually used black tea and created like a mountain scene with a full moon behind the clouds. And then I just very simply put on the first page, dream journal. And then this one, is one where I did incorporate some fabric. This was just a stamp that I had made that I was actually, it was a scrap piece of fabric. And I decided I wanted to glue it on the front and this could potentially be a dream journal. And then this is an example of one where I put some decorations on the 
the inside. This is a piece called The Call by Remedius Varro. Dreams were really important to her work as a painter. I wanted to kind of finish with some suggestions as to how you could use your dream journal. So we at BCPL actually have a book in our system called How Dreams Speak by Nicole Chilton. And she suggests using your dream journal in the morning. So leaving it by your bedside or in a drawer, which is what I do, because I have a drawer right, right by my bed. And then once you get up in the morning, you don't even have to spend a lot of time I'm doing this but just think about your dreams and record any um, like colors or symbols that are reoccurring um, you know even if you just wanted to jot down like a quick play-by-play um, -play, so to speak of, of what happened and then eventually you may start noticing important things that that are coming out in your dreams Thank you so much for watching, and if you are interested in learning more about bookbinding or dreams, check out our catalog at bcpl.info.